What printer are you getting? Oh, we have one. We have a, uh, we bought a Bamboo A1 Mini, um, which we've been playing around with and it's been, it's been super exciting. So I make the, the earring, the chaos and mm -hmm. it's the earrings. Diverse. And then I've been, Paul's been laughing at me because I've just been looking for things that I can organize so that I can design my own organizers and print them on our 3D printer. How well you can see. I can see. Look, I noticed this in the my, my filament, My filament rack, my printer <laughs> is just there. But if I turn my laptop too far, it'll probably pull the cable out the back. Um, but I've had an Ender 5, uh, ooh, three and a half years, four years nearly. Um, so I'm just about to go and buy myself something expensive. And I don't know whether I'm going to get the, the, the Bamboo X1 or the Prusa Mark 4 because they're both similar price and quality. Uh, but I'm like, I've proven to myself that I will get value from spending a lot of money on it. Um, so I'm like, well, okay, let's yeah, see. So I'll be honest, I'm, I'm, so they, they have a Black Friday sale, like the whole second half of November from Bamboo. And so, um, and because I'll, I'll go with the Bamboo because we've bought all the stuff for the Bamboo, you know, we've got extra nozzles and all the all the filaments and everything but but the mini is just it's too small i really want a bigger one and so yeah. I'm doing yeah. some doing some research to decide what i want to buy yeah i like the look of the bamboo but also <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Gets to use the <laughs> i do i do like the look of the bamboo but the Prusa are well known for being very open about how they do their their work and their their software and so on. I'm like, obviously, I feel like supporting that. So, yeah. so I'm leaning towards the Mark IV at the moment. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone to the Chaos Data Science Working Group meeting for November fifth. Uh, we are under the Chaos Code of Conduct, so uh, keep that in mind and please be kind to each other. Uh, we have a few things on the agenda, um, uh, some project updates, so uh, something we, we like to do. So I think I saw that the event location inclusivity was removed from this one. I assume that's because we're just talking about it in the DNI working group now instead of this one. Okay, perfect. Yeah, um, yeah that's awesome. That's a better place for it anyways, I think. Um, and then Project Exodus. I don't know, Callie, if you've had any time to work on this or want to provide any updates. Um, no, because I'd also say that it's like I wouldn't necessarily call it Project Project Exodus anymore because I think it's like we kind of changed the format to be like as a way to garner examples of different like circumstances that happen in open source um, rather than being a focus on Project Exodus. Okay. Um, so should we... Just uh, here, actually, let me just, it, I'll share my screen. Yeah, the document I think represents the the like title now. It's called like the Chaos Historical Example List. Um, sorry, I shared the wrong screen. Now I'm trying to figure out there. There we go. This one. Um, Okay, so sorry, go ahead, Kelly. I was distracted by trying to share my screen. Um, I was just saying that like I've just been working off of the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet I changed like the name of the spread spreadsheet and the um like kind of like the contents of it. So what uh what do we want to call this? I was I mean, I don't have like a specific name. I think the document name like fits I mean I really just think like trying to get like a set of historical examples that meet different criteria. So then when you what we want to do specific research um, that we have those sets to go to, because it seems like anytime like something happens and we're like, is this normal for X situation? But we don't have the content like and then it's like, well, we don't have a list. And so trying to get that historical list um, in the forefront is kind of the goal. Oh, okay. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So, so collecting some historical examples that we can use for other other projects, other research. Yes. And I think Callie, did you want to go through one of them in one of these meetings, just so that um, I think we said we were like going to actually talk through one to see what it actually meant, and then then do that for the others. What do you think? Um. Yeah. I'd be done. I'd be. I can do that in another meeting. I currently have a pretty horrible headache so i can barely read yeah not right not right now but i think plan for another meeting upcoming meeting would be good okay 
Okay. Um, speaking of upcoming meetings, I'm just going to diverge for just a second because our next meeting is during the LF Member Summit in Napa. So I know that Callie, Sean, and I will definitely be there. I'm not sure about other people. Sophia, are you going to be there? Of course, I it'll be at 8 a.m., so that's breakfast time. <laughs> I wonder, should we, um, Chan, do you want to go ahead and try to run run one and see um, if, if you have enough people for it, or should we just cancel it? I think I, I won't be there because I think InterSource Summit is going to be happening virtually. That's okay. the end. So will others, and Sophia said she's going to be on vacation. Okay. So perhaps we can cancel. And then we meet back up on December 3rd. So that'll be good. Which I expect will be our last meeting this year as chaos goes into its winter hibernation period. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, the license changes and orcs is is now a paper. Um, so I think we've I think we've talked about this either in this meeting or in others. But one of the things that I created was a place where we can put publications in the data science working group repository. So I started with the the paper that I've been working on. Um, and then we can just add new new papers. But what I thought it would be nice to do, and this is this is kind of what I did uh, for it, was I I actually cut a release um, for for the OFA paper, and I put specifically the files that I used in the paper. And then of course, because it's a release, it throws everything else in there. But it's a good way to um, to have everything, all of the data collected, um, so people can go back. And, you know, in two or three years, they can go back and see exactly what the, the data looked like. And it doesn't prevent us from continuing to update the, the ongoing data, which is what I wanted to do, because, you know, we've got ongoing research into these, um, you know, these forks. And so I want to continue to update the data and have it be up to date. When people just go to the repository, they can see the, the latest, greatest data. Um, so by cutting it as a, as a release, it just sort of gives us that. A snapshot in time of what um, what the data looked like when I wrote the paper. Um, so of course people are welcome to read the paper. Uh, thank you. I think actually I think most people here provided me feedback on the paper. So thank you. Um, I I really appreciated that because um, it came a long way from the the first version uh, based on on the feedback that I got. So that was yeah that was great. Uh, any questions about that that paper or the idea of doing publications? And these don't have to be academic publications. This could be like a report that you wrote, or you know something that was like research that came out of out of this um, this group. Okay, um, Elizabeth, do you want to talk about this next one? Um, yeah, so, uh, we're just moving all of the minutes for all the chaos meetings into this one doc. See how that goes, uh, be a little bit easier for people to just find the minutes. So, um, after this meeting, I'll just copy them over. So next time hop into that doc instead of the old one. That's it. Cool. Awesome. Um, and I assume that you'll just, uh, Maybe copy what we talked about fifth, so that we have that. Like, yes, more. yes, everything that we, yes. Um, and I'll also change this calendar, I think might link to the minutes too. So I'll, I'll change that as well. Okay, cool. And then we'll just put a link to this for historical meetings. Okay, cool, awesome. Yep. Yeah, I really like it. At first when I looked at it, I was like, I don't like this. Like, I can't find anything. It's, it's um, I'm old and don't like change. But the more I looked at it, the more I, the more I like it. <laughs> Because I have right now, I've got uh, like a tab group um, in my browser that has like 10 tabs that are all 
and 10 or 15 that are all meeting and related. And so now I can make that basically just, just the, the one. Kind of cool. Um, okay, anything else on the moving of the minutes? Okay. Um, anything else anyone wants to talk about? Because that is really kind of the end of our agenda. I know nobody's distracted today with anything going on, but... Um, I know I'm not. I, you know, I just had to finish a pint of ice cream before I got on the call. That's why I was late. I'm actually yeah, completely okay. serious. I was literally eating uh, as a form of court. It's, uh, it's almost 10.30. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's so here's the thing. I it's bought healthier than bourbon. I at this yeah, hour. I plan, I plan to have some of that later. Um, <laughs> but I uh, I order so we we get an online grocery delivery and I ordered ice cream which I never get and it specifically was for election night, and so I was looking at it thinking I was just going to take a little spoon of it earlier today around possibly before lunchtime, um, and they sent the wrong one. They didn't send the vegan one. They sent the other one, and so I can't eat it. And so I drove to the store over lunchtime because the only place that has the vegan ice cream is the big grocery store all the way on the other side of town. So I made a midday emergency run for election watching ice cream for later. So I am with you, Sean. My comfort food is chocolate digesters. There is a pack downstairs. I'm lactose, intol <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant and I have eaten one of the four quarts of ice cream I bought for today last night. That's how centered my life is around ice cream when I'm stressed. Some of the vegan ones are actually quite nice now. They didn't used to be. Just saying. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I also have other snacks, and I have a bottle of Laphroaig that I told Paul he wasn't allowed oh, to. Oh, I see. Oh. Now, I don't drink anymore, right? And I have that. If you go a little bit further past the rack of filament, there is my entire case of whiskey that I can't drink anymore. <laughs> I need people to come help me drink it. Come. Uh, well, all I all I need is an address, Greg, and I can be there in about thirty six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, friends are always welcome. I have a big house. I have a big house in rural Scotland. You're always welcome. <laughs> so yeah, but I I used. Lafroy, we've got Talisco, we've got Lagavulin, we've got some Oban, some Jura. It's all there. Good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need have, you to send me your address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you will end up paying for it in technical advice, but. <laughs> <laughs> I probably need that help. So, uh, yeah. No, I meant you to me. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, sir. I'm happy to pay that way. <laughs> Yeah, and I gave up drinking in 2019, unfortunately. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so, so we we're we're just at the reminders now. So, the KS Community Survey is open. If you have not taken that yet, uh, I would encourage you to do so. Boss backstage that CFP closes in a few days, so you've still got a couple of days um, to submit something to that. Note that it does overlap with scale. So if you've already submitted to scale, you probably want to skip it. Um, the FOSDEM CFPs are opening. So there's a community dev room again. Uh, the deadline for submitting to that is December 1st. There are also some, some other interesting dev rooms. So there's, there's one that's um, like open research, for example. Um, there's, I think, a another data one, uh, data analytics. And there's, I think there's a big data yeah, big data and data science. So loads of loads of things that you can submit to. So the CFPs are are opening kind of this this week. So most of them are most of them are open. But I'll encourage you to have a browse through there. And if there's anything you want to submit, we're always looking to get always looking to get some chaos talks at FOSDEM, especially outside of some of our traditional, traditional channels. Like I feel like a lot of people who go to this the community dev room have I've heard of us and are familiar with us, and I'll I'll probably submit something there uh, once I figure out what I want to do. John, is um, which one is Chaos Con going to be co-located with? Uh, so so it's co-located with FOSDEM, but it's the okay. Thursday before, so it's January thirtieth, and I think the CFP for Chaos Con should open soon, possibly gotcha. later today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to ask. I know that we're kind of. <laughs> I know that that's the 
that's come up but uh yeah so very soon as a matter of fact mm. um yeah so the idea is that we do uh chaos con on the 30th on the 31st is, the friday is an ofe event that a lot of people also attend open forum europe and uh, then fosdem over the weekend and then you take the train to london on monday and go to state of open con on uh tuesday tuesday and wednesday Tuesday, Wednesday, I think some, something like that. It's it's first week of February, right after uh, Fast Time. Okay, that's all I had. I don't know if anybody else has anything they want to talk about. Okay, awesome. Well, everybody have a good month. Since oh, wait, we're not gonna... I have yeah. one thing. Uh, <laughs> but you're you're going to LF Summit, right, John? Uh, yeah, the member summit. Did Ashley Wolf reach out to you about a meeting talking about data from GitHub and broader use case conversations? Yes, she did. And I also, Sean, asked her to send that to you. So, yeah, I, I can't make it. So I was just hoping that some folks from this space would be there. So that's good. Yeah. What's the, what's the name I'm looking go, for? But look, uh, Sean, look for an email or something from Ashley Wolf. I told her to email your S at Goggins. Um, oh, good. This, this um, is yeah, our opportunity to talk to GitHub about data. Um, I don't so think this, I have an. In, I don't think I have an email from her yet, but I could be misspelling mm -hmm. Ashley. She may not have. I will. She, I tell you what. I'll email, so it might not be an email. Uh, what else would it be? Possibly via LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. Okay. I don't know. Uh, she should have. She should have emailed it to you because I gave her your email address. I think she's just contacting people where she knows them. Like she sent me a to-do group message and uh, like a Slack message. And uh, <laughs> you know. so I think it's just, you know, wherever, wherever she happens to have you. Yeah. But Sean, the, the link in the email that I just sent you has the, um, the doodle poll for availability so that she's trying to get people together on Tuesday. So I think it'd be great. All right. could be. Yeah, I will be there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Sophia. <clears throat> I'm just glad to know you're, you're able to attend because um, I know they want to talk about GitHub Archive, which it's going to be interesting to talk about it without anyone from Google in the room. So uh, we'll see if I can get someone to proxy that for me. But if not, you can still have an effective conversation about the shortcomings of their API. Sounds good. Okay. That's it. Anything else? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll see all of you in December if I don't run into you earlier than that. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Take Bye. care, folks.